We continue to preview the 2022 college football season, and today's stop is in Topeka as we get to visit with the head football coach at Washburn, Coach Craig Schurig, in his 21st year with the program. Coach, 9-3 and three last season, a trip to the Division II playoffs. Uh, that sounds like it was a great year, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on that as you bring us into where we are now because camp is right around the corner. Yeah, you know, especially after 2020, we didn't play, obviously. Uh, had a lot of those guys back 2000. Uh, uh, I mean, in 2019, we didn't play 2000. Uh, sorry, I'll go back. <laughs> 2020 didn't play 2021. We had the, we had a really good season. Uh, and a lot of it had to do with our our, our veteran group. Um, and we had some of those guys graduate, uh, like you said, nine and three. Um, really, we, 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 we had a lot of close games, ended ended games really well. Fourth quarters, we played well. We usually came up with the play, either offensively, defensively or even special teams. And we won a lot of close games. That's the way this conference is. Uh, most games you play are going to be tight, and you got to figure out ways to win uh, in the fourth quarter. Um, we we return a lot of guys again. Uh, we lose some guys that, that had really good senior years, um, but we have good leadership coming back. We anticipate being very competitive again this year, uh, and then hopefully make a return trip to the playoffs and and, and do more damage than we did uh, last year. And hopefully that experience and we feel like the guys are hungry to return. Uh, but we have a tough conference schedule, so you have to take it one week at a time. Uh, but we really have some good players throughout, whether it's skill positions on the line of scrimmage, uh, special teams players. And we're blessed that way. We have a lot of guys that came back for either their fifth fall, some even their sixth fall uh, due to the COVID year. Um, but we're, we're a team that really resonates with guys that are in our program for you know, that four or five years and they, you know, they get to be a part of a uh, uh, family type atmosphere. And we feel like we get their best years uh, that, that junior and senior year. Coach, I'm glad you mentioned family because I, I know there's someone that you've had uh, close to your heart. I'm sure getting to play for you over the, the recent years. And uh, among those players that aren't coming back, Mitch Schurig, your quarterback last season and, and for some seasons prior. And I think uh, what Gene Castle did was probably just copy and paste his name so many times through the record book that uh, he's definitely a, a, a mainstay in, in the Ichabod's uh, history and lore, but he's not going to be there. He's used all his eligibility. So talk about the quarterback position. Is there going to be competition in the camp? Yeah, Mitch had a really good career, and he had a really good th th last year, senior year, and, and was a leader for us. And uh, he, in two games, he didn't play, and Kellen Simonsic stepped in and did a really good job. Uh, one of them was against Northwest Missouri uh, and, and really played well, and he, he led us to a win there, which was big. Uh, and then the very next week versus Central Oklahoma, went down there uh, in, in Edmond and won a very tight game. Um, but he had a, he had an excellent, excellent spring. And, and sometimes you get a gauge of your team in the spring. We hope that it was a good gauge. We felt like we had great spring practices. Uh, and Kellen was one of the reasons for that. Uh, he was very accurate with the ball, had very few turnovers, um, and really solidified himself as what we think is as our number one quarterback. And now he just needs more game experience. Um, but he, we surround him with, with some pretty good skill guys. J.J. Letcher is probably one of the better receivers. Uh, in Division Two, and he returns. He's also a great return man. Um, and uh, Peter Affle is another wide receiver for us that had, uh, I think he had nine touchdowns last year. Uh, we probably need to throw him the ball a little bit more because he catches a lot of touchdowns, so we need to get him more receptions in there. Hopefully he gets double digits. Um, and we return a, a, on the line of scrimmage. Uh, we lose Colton Dunkel, who was a, a, a sixth-year uh, uh, offensive lineman for us, starting center. But other than that, we return everybody. And Brandon Funk is a young man that plays tackle for us. It's one of our leaders. And uh, so we, you know, when, when you come in as an offense and when we report to camp on Saturday, we should be able to be a pretty mature group and kind of get into uh, what we left off with. Uh, as soon as we get through the acclimation period, we should be able to hit, you know, hopefully we're, 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 we're executing at a pretty good rate uh, early in camp. Here on Midwest Sportsnet, we get to visit today with Craig Schurig, who is the Washburn coach. And I encourage you, please take the time, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We are enjoying talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, talk about that defense then, too, as, as a number of players returning. And let's just go with the secondary. Peyton Lane coming back, Kevin Neal coming back, Jameson Phelps as well. And, and you look like you're strong right off the bat. 
Yeah, and, and like you mentioned, all those guys are, are going to be seniors. Some of them are sixth year seniors, some fifth year seniors. Uh, and anytime you have a, a secondary that's led by upperclassmen, that usually bodes well for you. Uh, a lot of our guys, or a number of them, they've graduated. They're working towards their master's degree with the extra semesters. So they're very mature and they kind of know how to take care of business. Um, but yeah, if you can start with that secondary with some maturity and experience, uh, they're also, you know, talented kids. They, they, all three of those guys can really run. They have great ball skills. Um, you know, the game now, uh, on, no matter what level you play, there's a lot of passing involved. Most teams throw the ball 50 percent or more. And uh, your secondary is key. Uh, and we feel like we'll have a strong secondary. And that, that, those guys will definitely lead us. And then that next layer uh, of defense, Grant Bruner is a returning starting uh, uh, linebacker. And he'll kind of be the, the kind of the captain of the ship, so to speak. He'll get that front seven lined up. Um, another guy that came back for that year of eligibility, he graduated already. He'll work towards a second degree, but a very mature young man. And uh, so when you're, you know, sometimes these guys will lead the film study. The coach will, you know, pop the film on. These guys have been around long enough to know everything. Uh, it makes it kind of fun uh, that way. And he'll kind of pass down the legacy to some of those other linebackers. And then uh, Landon Urban is a defensive end for us. It's uh, This will be his fourth year starting for us. And he'll be a fifth year uh, senior. Plays really hard. He's kind of undersized uh, on the D line, but he plays so hard and plays with great leverage. Uh, that he gets away with it. Uh, and we, we come at people a, a little bit with numbers on the D line. We, we're, we're probably, we're blessed. We, we have about seven or eight guys that I think can really play. And so we rotate them in. So when there's a stoppage in play or you can get a sub in, you'll see our D line kind of change out almost like a hockey team with a line. We'll do a line change, <laughs> uh, keep them fresh. Coach, listen, I, I, it's it's fun to hear about those things too, and I, I the 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 maturity, the upperclassmen. I, there was a team that I heard last year had six or seven players that were close to twenty five, and I know we're going to be talking about that for another year or two yep. with that COVID year back in twenty twenty. But uh, it it's it's good to hear uh, that there there it's maturity. It's not just the age; it's the maturity that they bring to the table. Well, with that in mind, then, uh, you know, I'm sure that the players know about the MIAA preseason poll that was released recently and the Ichabods were picked fourth there. How does that, uh, fare within the ranks? Yeah, I, I think it'll motivate us. Um, and, and the, the league is tough. I mean, you, you can look, usually Northwest is going to be one. They've been dominant for such a long time. Uh, and you know, year in and year out, they're the team to beat. Um, but then after that, it, 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 it's probably anybody's game. And there's probably six or seven of us that will really be fighting for those spots. And, and we, we don't want to hand Northwest the championship either. <laughs> but we'll all be fighting them for the championship. But there is there's legitimately seven, eight teams in this conference that if you're not ready to play and you don't play at your best, you're probably going to lose. Uh, so you you really have to play well. And, and, and the thing that maybe separates our conference from some of the other division twos in the country, maybe that depth. I mean, when you, when you play a team, maybe 500 or below 500 late in the year, and they are a really good football team. They've got good linemen. They've got good linebackers. They've got good skill guys. And it's just a, a few breaks here or there, how they ended a game, a missed kick or whatever. Um, sometimes special teams is the difference. Um, but our, our conference is tough. So, um, you know, it, being ranked fourth isn't, isn't, uh, a terrible thing, but we obviously have bigger goals than that. And with this group we have coming back, we definitely hope that, you know, they're striving for much better than that. Um, but you're, you, you got to come to play every week. And, and you mentioned small college football, small college football, is still kind of what uh, intercollegiate athletics was built to be right. And, and the major college football has become such a business. Uh, sometimes it's who's got the bigger pockets who can, who can dole out the most NIL money to get recruits, that kind of thing. Uh, still, Division II football is a, a really cool brand. Uh, you get great college students. You get really talented kids. And they may not be quite as tall, maybe not quite as fast as what you're seeing in the BCS level, but they play just as hard, and uh, they're a lot of fun to coach. And coach, that's where my heart is. That's that's why I'm enjoying getting to do what I'm doing right now and getting to visit with you because I, I really appreciate the the stories, the athletes, yeah. the coaches, the, the 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 programs at this level. I'll ask you one more question. I'm very thankful for your time today, and that is this: the season gets underway for you all. Not one, but two Thursday night games, yeah. and then 
Uh, it's it's interesting with the with the teams that are on the schedule there. You're at home taking on Lincoln. You're on the road going to Warrensburg to take on Central Missouri. Both of those two teams playing on a Thursday night. Each one has a new head coach this year. So yeah. talk about the opening to your schedule. Yeah, that is unique. Our our, our conference usually the, the coaching carousel really there isn't one. It usually stays yeah. pretty stable, but this year there was. Uh, but yeah, we we do something unique in our conference. The Thursday night games, I really like them. Uh, we don't get a bye week. We go twelve straight weeks. I mean, 11 straight games, 12 teams. Um, so you got a pseudo bye week a little bit. You play on Thursday, Thursday, then the next Saturday, you kind of give the guys a weekend off and it makes them feel like you're kind of cheating a weekend out of it uh, and you give them a little break. But yeah, we start at home versus Lincoln. Uh, we're looking forward to the home game. And then we go to uh, Warrensburg in Central Missouri. And we think that they'll be similar to what they've been. Uh, Central will be because uh, Coach Lamberson was there before. They'll run that he runs a, a very good offense and then defensively they kept everybody. Um, but we do that in conference too, because it gets the student body. A lot of times you can, you know, the students will stick around on Thursday, fill the stands up on Thursday night, check out the local team, check out their team. And hopefully you encourage them to come back on some Saturdays and, and get with it. But uh, we look forward to those Thursday night games. I kind of like them. Uh, it is a little different. It kind of messes up your calendar a little bit in your head. <laughs> And uh, but then it does give you it. It does almost give the kids almost like a little bit of a break that weekend. And then you're in the grind for the next nine weeks because we don't it, it might be smart for D2 to start a little earlier. Then you get a bye week somewhere in there because those bye weeks are kind of handy. Um, but we're, we're 11 straight weeks, 12 teams. And so this is one way you give them a little bit of a break. I understand, Coach. Well, you know, you mentioned 12 games, too. You had 12 games last season. I know yes. that's what you're pushing for again, 12 and maybe more. There so, you go. I appreciate that. Co Coach Craig Schurig with the with, with Washburn. And, uh, Coach, success to you and to the Ichabods this season. We'll continue to follow you here on Midwest Sportsnet. Thank you so much for taking time with us today. Hey, and thanks for the attention. We appreciate all the attention we can get at Division II level. And like you said, it's 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 a worthy level to follow. And uh, all the best of luck to you uh, this season also. And hopefully you're calling me back on to, to talk about some of the playoff games that we have coming up. <laughs> you have an open invitation, Coach. There we go. Thank you very much. I appreciate you.